Attackers today don't hack in, they log in. And that puts your username and password as a prime target for these attackers. And for businesses, that puts you at an even greater risk because you have to realize how you can secure passwords for all of your employees. In fact, Verizon's 2023 data breach investigation report found that 49% of all external attacks originated from compromised credentials. So when Passbolt asked me to look at their password manager, I jumped on the opportunity because I knew they were built for businesses. In this video, I'm gonna walk through Passbolt and talk about all their unique security features that make this a really good option for businesses that are really security focused. And stick around to the end because I'll give you a 20% off discount code for Passbolt that will allow you to get started right away. Many password managers today started off for individuals and then morphed into things that businesses can use. But Passbolt was really built from the ground up with businesses and teams in mind. And Passbolt isn't shy about talking about this. On their homepage, they show that they have over 15,000 organizations that rely on Passbolt, including Fortune 500 companies, government agencies, the defense industrial base, universities, and even startups. So many of the features that we'll talk about today are things that businesses are going to care about that may not apply to individuals themselves, even though it should. One of the coolest things that stood out to me was that it's not actually a password vault. And while that may seem bad, it's actually a really good thing. Traditional password managers have a vault type technology where you create this container, add in your passwords into that, and then anyone that has access to that container can see all of the passwords. But Passbolt is built differently. It relies on encrypting each and individual secret. This allows collaboration to be so much easier because instead of having to create new vaults for every time you want to share a password, you can just share the password and it's still secure. And this also applies to when you don't want them to have access to a specific password anymore. So instead of having to kick them out of the vault where they might still need access to other passwords, you can simply get rid of the one password you don't want them to have access to anymore. And while the architecture is really interesting, where I dug into was the security around Passbolt. And they have a 50 page white paper that talks all about this. And don't worry, I read through it for you and I'm gonna give you the highlights. Let's start with one of the most important things. How do they encrypt passwords? And they're using asymmetric end-to-end -end encryption. In fact, it's based on something known as OpenPGP. This is a technology that has been around since the early 1990s and has been battle tested and secured over time. In fact, I remember when I was first getting into security, this is how I used to send encrypted emails back and forth. One of the things that I hated with it was that I had to go and communicate with the end recipient to get their public key so that I can then encrypt something. It creates a massive workload for every user to then go collect and manage everything. So you can imagine for a team, if you wanna share sensitive things like passwords back and forth, this just doesn't really scale very well. But again, that's what Passbolt has solved. So let's say that Dave wants to send a secret to Diane. He wants to share a password. Because Dave and Diane are using Passbolt, it's going to facilitate this exchange. So Dave fires up Passbolt and says that he wants to encrypt this secret to send to Diane. And so what happens is that Passbolt is going to provide the public key to Dave, which he uses to encrypt the secret. And then that is sent through Passbolt using a secure channel and then Diane receives an email saying, hey, Dave wants to send you a secret. Diane opens up Passbolt, is able to decrypt that secret with her private key, and then that password has been shared. At no point is Passbolt getting any of your secret keys, your passphrase, nothing. That all stays with you. If it weren't for Passbolt, Dave would have to do all of this on his own and would just get super frustrated and not wanna have to deal with it. This level of granularity and control shines through in one of Passbolt's latest features, which is role-based access control, or RBAC for short. RBAC gives you granular control over what users can do, and typically you wanna to try to minimize this down to only what's required for their job duties. This is really a standard thing for any mature security program, so it's great to see that Passbolt is building this in natively. So now that we know how Passbolt is securing the passwords, what about access to the passwords? One of the weak areas for any password manager is how do you secure authentication to that password manager in the first place? And this was another area that I was really pleasantly surprised with Passbolt 
because natively, they are providing a very secure way to authenticate. In fact, it's the same premise behind passwordless technology, which I am a huge fan of. So instead of using a username and password to authenticate to Passbolt, they're using GPG Auth, which is based on the public-private key pairs that we talked about before. The reason I love this is because it's secure and phishing resistant. There's no password to enter, so attackers can't try to source that password. In addition, if an attacker tries to create a phishing web page, because it's using this private public key pair, it doesn't know and has never been set up with that phishing website, so attackers literally can't try to get this login from the user. That's why it's super secure, and that's why you wanna have this in front of your password manager. So while it's great that your secrets are secure and authentication to those secrets are secure, what about Passbolt themselves? The last couple of years haven't been very kind to certain online password managers. So anyone that's looking at a password manager really has a lot of scrutiny that's being applied to make sure that they're not putting their passwords at risk. Passport has gone out of their way with transparency to a degree that will probably make a lot of people uncomfortable because they are an open commode about absolutely everything that they're doing. This is a security and privacy first mindset that I think is really interesting and something that a lot of other companies should try to adopt. True to transparency, Passbolt opens up their code so that anyone can see it. It's open source. This is something that some of the most popular password managers do to bolster the confidence in their code because the more people that can see it, the more opportunity to catch bugs and security flaws that can then be fixed. In fact, over the last 24 months, Passbolt has had over 10 code reviews to do just that. Not to mention, they've gone out of their way to be GDPR compliant, which is one of the most privacy focused regulations that are out there, and they're SOC 2 Type 2 certified. This is one of the most stringent security certifications somebody can get. So I've talked about the security a bunch, but how do you actually get started with Passbolt? Well, they make it super easy to get set up and run it. You have the option of using the cloud-based version that Passbolt manages. Or if you want to take control of everything yourself, it's super easy to get set up and running. For the local options, you can run it on just about any major operating system. You can see them on their help docs here. So you know Debian, Ubuntu, they have a Docker image. You can throw this up on the cloud. You have full control over this. They even have an option for a Raspberry Pi. I don't know why you would wanna be able to do that, but you can do it. It just speaks to the flexibility and the control that you have over installing this and running it the way that you want to run it. If you do wanna install this yourself, there's gonna be three things that you're gonna need. You're gonna need a server that you can install Passbolt on. You're gonna need an email server and you're gonna need a time server, NTP server. On that Passbolt server that you set up, you're gonna need a database and you're gonna need a web service to run everything. If you don't know what any of this means, this is not the path for you, and I would encourage you to just go to the cloud option to get yourself up and running quicker. Whichever path you decide to take, all you do is go over to Passbolt.com, and then you can see the different options that are available, whether it's an on-prem install or a cloud signup, which you can get 14 days for free. Pricing is going to be different between the self-hosted option and the cloud-based option. And you can see here that they have three different versions. They have a community version, which is free. They have a business version, which is gonna be paid per user. And then for enterprise, you're gonna to have to talk to somebody to get more of that information. The real options between the community version and the business version is going to be more enterprise-wide support that you're gonna want. Things like working with LDAP, single sign-on, account recovery, and a log of everything that's going on. These are all features that you're gonna want for a business version. We can switch over to the cloud version and we can see it's a little bit different here. There is no community version here. You're gonna to have to go with the business option or the enterprise option. So again, we're gonna just test out the cloud option to give you a feel of what this looks like. So in order to get started, we're just gonna type in some information here and then we can go ahead and click get started. This is gonna shoot over an email that you're gonna to have to validate just to make sure it's actually you. When you go to validate that, it's gonna open up another tab and this is where Passbolt is gonna start deploying your cloud in instance. So we'll go ahead and just let this load. Now Passbolt does require that you use a browser extension. So you're going to have to go and install this here. So we'll just go ahead and click on that and then go ahead and just add to Chrome. You can see here that it gets created in the top corner here. We'll go ahead and click through next. And this is where you're going to have to create your master password. This is the most important decision that you're going to make today. You need to make sure that it is secure. Passbolt's guidance is going to use at least eight characters, uppercase and lowercase and special characters. So we'll go ahead and put in a password here. Okay, so I put in my password, I'll pat myself on the back because it says it's a very strong password and I'll go ahead and click next. One thing to note is that you can use an existing private key. So if you're using a private key that you like, you can just enter this in here too. 
I'm just gonna generate a new one. That's what we're going through here. So I'll click next. So at this point, Passport is allowing us to download our private key. This is called the recovery kit, but it really is just your private key. Do not leave this laying around on your desktop. I suggest printing it and storing it in a very safe location. Okay, so we just secured this and we're gonna go ahead and click next. This is another neat little trick that Passbolt does to just make sure that you are actually logging into Passbolt. So pick a color and you know you can put in your little security codes here or you can just put in as a randomized thing. We'll go ahead and click next. At this point, now we're signing into Passbolt. Now, if you remember, this is using that passkey technology to log in. I didn't actually enter any username or password here and it has nothing to do with the master password that I created earlier. It's a pretty clean interface here. We can see that you've got passwords, you can do user management, you have the ideas for administration where we can mess with all the different configuration settings. It's really pretty robust here. A quick look at some of these controls, you can set up multi-factor authentication. You know I'm a fan of that. I definitely recommend the YubiKey option to make sure that your users are as secure as possible. You have the option for different MFA policies here as well where you can do mandatory opt-in. You know that I'm gonna recommend mandatory here. And then you also have the option to disallow remembering a device for a month. That would basically just force everybody to use their password or MFA every single time that they're logging in. You can go and look at password policies here where you can put in different configuration defaults here. This is gonna be things like the length of the password, the different types of character sets. You have a lot of different flexibilities here. Another cool feature is that you have the ability to have Passable go reach out and check to see if a password has been compromised. That is an option if you don't like that. So you have the ability to turn this off. For email notifications, this is probably the most robust I've ever seen in any password manager so that you can get email alerts for just about anything that's happening in Passbolt. So, you know, you can go through this and do this with your heart's content, and then you can make sure that the information that you're sending is customized. So, you know, in this default settings, no usernames are set, no encrypted secrets, anything like that. So totally customizable. The account recovery is gonna be very specific for businesses and you wanna really think through how you're going to do this because for a true account recovery, what's going to happen is that the user is going to have to provide their private key to the administrator. And so this is going to be in a position where now that admin would have that private key and could get access to those secrets. So you have the ability here to opt in, opt out, you can make it mandatory. By default, this is disabled because again, security first with Passbolt. The risk here is that if a user does lose that key, they're kind of screwed. They're not gonna be able to get their passwords back because Passbolt doesn't have them. This is all gonna come down to what your tolerance is for security versus convenience and usability with your users. And then for businesses, you have the ability to integrate this with single sign-on to make your users' lives even easier. So they have options for Microsoft and Google. So the risk here is that it does increase the chances that somebody could get access to your passwords if they compromise that SSO password. So you really gotta think through how secure you wanna make this while balancing that with the convenience of the interface. And the last thing we have here is the new feature that Passbolt rolled out on our back. And so you can see all the different permissions that are available for all the different users. And so pretty robust here. Uh, again, you can really get detailed on what you want your users to have and what your admins can do as well. Using Passbolt is really easy. It's pretty in line with what other password managers are gonna do. If I wanted to create a new password, I can go ahead and just do this. And you can see, I can type in the specific URI, username, password, you can generate whatever you need here. It'll be random. And you can see all the different options are available here where you can customize the different password types as well. If you want you know, more characters, less characters, whatever it might be, it's pretty versatile. This is gonna be in line with most password managers that are out there. So if I wanna create an account on something, I'm just gonna go in for the normal things here and I'm just gonna enter in some information here. And then you can see it pops up a little icon here. And so that is gonna allow us to generate a password. And then when we go to sign up, we'll get a little prompt here on whether or not we wanna save the password with Passbolt. So I'm gonna click save here, and then I need to type in my master password. This is important because this is when it's encrypting the password. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on submit there, and then it's saved. If we go back over into our password manager, we can see it's already ported over. It's as simple as that. The next time I go to the site and I wanna log in, I go here and you can see there's a Passbolt option here and it has a little one on it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just click through there. It's gonna ask me for my passphrase again. I'll enter that. That's decrypting that password, allowing us to then pop it in. And then we go ahead and 
voila, we can log straight in. Now, if I wanted to share this account for some reason, don't recommend it, but if you wanted to do that, you simply go back to the web app and you can go and click on share. This is going to allow you to share it with other people that are in Passport. So if you had team members here, then you could add people to this secret very, very easily. Now Passport has a bunch of customization for the profile as well. You can see we have our keys inspector here. This is the public key block. We have the uh, ability to change our passphrases. We can change the security token if we really want to. You have themes. We don't have MFA or account recovery set up for this organization yet, so that's not gonna be there. But they also have a mobile app setup guide here that you can use this on your phone. And it allows you to transfer your account key to your mobile device so that you can use this seamlessly. So there you have it. You can see Passport Passbolt is super easy to use, and with the options to use either Passbolt's cloud-hosted version or using it yourself and owning every aspect of the setup and maintenance, you really have the choose-your-own-adventure style that you want for a password manager. And with a company that is so focused on transparency and security, it really can help you feel better that your information is secure. Not to mention that this was built specifically for teams and businesses. So if you're looking for an enterprise solution, I'd encourage you to check this out and see if it's a good fit for your business. For anyone that's interested in using Passbolt, here's a 20% discount code that you can use towards Passbolt Pro or their cloud option.